Alright, well, I guess I can go to the roof now. Which room is it? It's over here, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. I, I thought it was bugged or something, and then I clicked, and then I accidentally skipped some dialogue. What was she saying? Damn it. Did I just save? I don't know when my save... I, I might have just saved, but I'm not sure. I don't... I really want to know what she said. Okay, okay, good. Wait a second. There's no way I'm going out on that slippery roof, my boy. I'll wait here, alright. Come and get me when you're done on the roof. Oh, that's it. Okay. Alright. Let's shove the curl bar in here. Maybe I should ask the doctor if he's ready before I put it there. Alright. Okay, how do I... I'm supposed to talk to him on the walkie-talkie, right? How do I do that? How do I use it? Do I need to actually go to him? Like, I'm supposed to use the walkie-talkie, right? Use it on the stairs? No, that's not the way I want to go. I guess I need to go in person? No. Hey, doctor. the doctor if he's ready, which I'm supposed to do on the walkie-talkie. How do I use the walkie-talkie? Hey, doc, it's... Oh, I need to right-click it? Are you... What? Are you ready? Okay, then let's start this thing. What the... F <laughs> I just talked to him from two feet away. I could have sworn right-click was examine, not use. But, okay. Alright, let's try this again. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Okay, let's start this thing. Now I better hide before... <laughs> okay then. It's alive! <laughs> it's alive! Come closer, beautiful one. Don't be afraid. Come and meet your master. Yes. I'm also your father in some ways. There's no need to be shy. Don't hide from me. I understand you're confused, but I will explain everything if you only give me some time. What are you doing? Stop it. I said stop it. You naughty little thing, you... Stop it! Oh. I don't think the minion likes its master. That was a lucky fall. I think I'm still in one piece. But I doubt the doctor is. Yeah. Might have to use my shotgun in a second here. Ooh, it's 
place taking on an interesting color. Hello? Where the fuck did he go? I don't see him anywhere. Well, at least I can take the book now. It's a copy of Mein Kampf. That's what it is. Or perhaps an original. It's all in German. But I found a photograph between pages. Dear God. This man must be some kind of neo-Nazi. Why on earth would he keep a picture of Hitler saluting the crowds? I... Yeah, he's pretty fucked up. I don't know, this might be the least fucked up thing about him though, to be honest. He was, after all, trying to be f like... F make a Frankenstein thing. Alright. Hmm. Control panel. If I get this right, switching this thing on will bring the person in the chair back to life. It would be pointless to do it now. German version of Windows. Alright, should I assemble my mannequin? I don't know why I'm doing this, but... Here we go. Alright. Cool. Now I've got a super creepy mannequin. I'll give him a gun. No? Oh, what the hell? Wait, what? Wait, am I supposed to... Am... Am I so supposed to... Match this? Pose? Like, why? Is that seriously what I'm doing? What the fuck? Now he looks like a zombie. Uh. <laughs> Does that match the picture? I don't think so. I think his legs are straight down. I'm just gonna... There we go. Perfect. Flawless. So where does that look? Just left, right, forwards? I don't understand why I'd even want to do this. Right, so I've got my little... Hitler... doll... great... Hmm. What does this do? Oh! That's weird, why didn't it work before? Yep, I'd say he's, uh, some sort of Nazi. Capsule. Large capsule with a body of a man frozen inside. Is it? No, it's impossible. I don't know how to open this thing. Besides, I don't really want to. Oh. This is where he died, isn't it? Yep, I see a blood trail. Freshly developed. They show they all show different bodies, all cut open and half rotten. Was the doctor some kind of neo Nazi? Oh, swash swastikas all over the place. Swastika is it swastika or swastika? Not entirely sure. It's not a word I say often. A chainsaw I think we all know what that's for, huh? A perfect murder weapon. My god. I shouldn't take this. I shouldn't. Because I fear I will use it. But it's so beautiful. So tempting. Oh my god, dude. It's singing your name, Ivy. What the fuck? If Joe hadn't lost it before, I think now he has. It's so beautiful and tempting. 
Uh huh. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. You've got a nice collection here. I wouldn't know what to do with them. Barry, perhaps? There he is. A human leg. So that's how the doctor makes his creatures. Shotgun shells. Box of shells. Okay, well, I guess I can shoot for a lot. Don't need to withhold my ammo now. It's been sawed off. I know I've carried human heads around with me, but I really don't think this arm will be of much use. He must have crawled inside to hide from that monster he created. His head is open, and I think the brain is missing. Ooh. Oh shit, I think the game crashed. Oh no, it didn't. It's weird. Looked like it crashed for a second. I'm not sure if you could hear the looping music. But it did the loop thing that's usually in indicative of a crash, you know, the eh, 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 eh thing. I think it's time to go say hello to the last Sophie. It's up here, right? Yeah. I think. Here we go. Let's see if the dolls approve of this. Oh. This... This has gone too far. I've become a ruthless killer. I need to get out of here. Yes, you do, Joe. That last cigarette. I think I really need it now. Fair enough. All four memories of Sophie are dead. But where's Ivy? She's got to be near. I can feel it. There's only one place left to go, isn't there? Through the mirror. Which looks like it has a conveniently human-shaped hole in it, although it doesn't look comfortable to pass through, gotta say. It's probably got some sharp edges. Oh! Four little birds. Four birds with heads chopped off. You and me, Joe, we're alike. We have killing in our blood, don't we? But you ain't getting any further. No. A while ago, the devil went through here. He made me write this. He made me write on this wall with his blood so it would not be forgotten. And once the devil comes, he stays forever. Okay. Are you ready to meet the devil? No, I'm not. Fuck you. Oh my god, I cut him in half. That's a blade shotgun, apparently. Could it really be that guy from the cellar? He's dead at last. I guess it is the guy from the cellar. I could go back down there to see if he's there, but I really don't feel like it. I'm good. Here it is. It's time to go through. you. You again. What do you want from me? This is the last time our paths cross. 
I'm gonna smash you into pieces if it's the only thing I can... If it's the only... If it's the only way I can save Ivy. Say goodbye to your sick little world, Sophie. This is our final battle. And this time, you die for good. What the fuck? Holy shit. And I just realized it didn't- Oh my- Is this a boss? No, don't walk closer- What the fuck? Get away from it! Can I seriously not talk to it? Playtime is over, I'm gonna kill her for good this time. But, but Agnes was saying I should talk to her. I don't know if I can really talk with this beast, but... I don't think I can. But I just realized I forgot to take Agnes with me. Not sure if I can. Ew. Did it just take out my shotgun? I can't use the gun. I don't want to use the gun with a mirror. Use it with Sophie. Okay, pick up the shotgun then. Let's just calmly walk around. Now, could you please? Could you please shoot Sophie? Why can't I shoot Sophie? What the fuck? Can I seriously not shoot her? Oh, my shotgun! Is, is there something around here? Can I just go back through? No. Ch shoot her. With a gun. I'm, I'm left clicking. I don't understand. Wait, the barrel is empty. What the f- Didn't I load it before? Oh, I used it on the axe guy. Alright, I gotta load it. Okay. Box, box, box of shit. There we- There we go. Reload a shotgun. Shoot the baby creature thing. Some cumbersome reloading here. <laughs> I have to admit, this isn't a very good boss fight, nor is it very tense, because I seem to be literally invincible. The creature only appears to be capable of giving me a mi the mild annoyance of having to reload my weapon and pick it up again. Or pick it up again and then reload it. Alright, so I guess I'm done shooting that. Oh. Oh. I'm, uh... Yeah, I'm not invincible. Alright, let's try that again. No, no, shoot, shoot it. There we go. Alright, now you're gonna spit on me. Hopefully I loaded it anyway. Yep. So I shoot that thing twice. Wait, why do I have two shot? Why do I have two shotguns? I have two shotguns. Why do I have two shotguns? Now I have one shotgun. I don't understand. Okay. That didn't seem to do anything. That's not good. I have two shotguns again. I guess I'll just use the already loaded one? Uh, okay. Huh. Now I only have one shotgun. This is a very strange boss fight. Now I have two again. Okay. I've already shot the baby thing a bunch of times. Like, I can either shoot Sophie or the baby thing. Neither seems to do anything. What about the pistol? No, you can't use the pistol at all. Is there like a little hotspot I'm missing? If I shoot the baby thing anymore, it doesn't do damage. Like, I wanted to shoot her in the head, but it doesn't seem like I can. I'm gonna try one last time to shoot her in the head. Like, right there. It doesn't matter, it's just shoot Sophie or shoot the baby-like creature. And I'm gonna die, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm 
not too hot on this boss fight, and by that I mean I'm gonna glance at the walkthrough and figure out how to beat it, because it seems kinda horrible. <clears throat> Alright. Let's see. Alright, aim for the baby-like creature on her back. You have to shoot it four times, reloading after each shot. Wait, that's it? But I thought I did that and it didn't... take any more damage. It just says shoot the baby-like creature four times. Okay. Can I reload it? There we go. Alright, so I'll just keep shooting it, I guess. Alright. That did damage, as it should. That did damage, as it should. Didn't do damage. Now I've got two shotguns again. Why do I have two shotguns? Okay. Huh. So the first shot does damage, the second shot does damage, the third shot does no damage, and then the fourth shot kills it. Ivy! Oh my god. Is she... Did I just shoot Ivy? Ivy. Her body is cold. She's not breathing. Oh, no, no, no. I can fix this. I can fix this. I can bring her back to life. With the evil Nazi doctor's machine. Nothing will go wrong with that. Nothing at all. It doesn't look like I shot her, though. She doesn't... I mean, she'd be all bloody. She doesn't look bloody. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Five. Was there even a fifth floor before? I'm gonna go for two for- nothing happened. Oh, shit. Nothing happens, I have to go for five. What? This is impossible. I killed him. I'm sure I killed him. I did, didn't I? This is messing with my head. Is it some strange dream after all? Hey, you. I don't know how you came back to life, and I don't care. Just let me be. I have nothing to do with you. You hear me? Not so chatty without your axe? Alright. Don't talk to me, then. Just go your way, and I'll go mine. Oh. Joey. You little shit. Look what you've done to me. What you've done to us. Dad? It's your fault that she... It's always been you. You made her do what she did. We both know that, don't we? You fucking killed her, you little bastard! Yes, Joe? Yeah. You faggot. You couldn't keep an eye on your little brother for five fucking minutes. He was always the better one. I wish it was you who died that day. I wish it was you. Maybe then. Maybe Mary wouldn't have done what she had. You have blood on your hands, son. You have blood all over you. You just hurt everyone near you. You made Mother kill herself. I had to do something. If it wasn't for the drink, I'd just do the same thing. But look at me now. I'm rotting in front of a TV set. And you... You're gonna kill me again. So fuck you, Joe. Fuck you. Gonna bring her back to life. Gonna bring her back to life. Alright, the ECG. It's already switched on. Okay. Control panel. 
Come on. Come on. It's time to turn it off, Joe. This ends here. I only wish I got here before you'd... Well, done what you'd done. Back off. I don't know who you are and what you want, but I know I must finish what I've started. I have to bring her back to life. Don't you understand? This is the only way. The only way. You have no idea what I've gone through today. I won't hesitate to shoot you. Joe, I need you to put the gun down. We're both going to get out of this room alive. I'm not your enemy. I just want to help you. I'm not interested. Get lost, can't you see? I found her at last. I can't stop it now because this is her only chance. Her last chance are... So please, leave me alone. I don't want to kill you. Go away, just fuck off. I'm afraid I can't do that, Joe. I understand that you are very confused about what's happened here. But I can't explain. Just give me two minutes and listen to what I say. Are you fucking deaf? I'm going to blow your brains out if you don't leave me alone. Please, Joe, I'm a friend. Just listen to me. Everyone's ready. We've been just waiting for you, Billy. The team's in position. I understand you're taking over. This is your case, Darren. I'm only here because Dr. Zellman was my friend. Dr. Zellman? That must be Dr. Z. Yeah. Sure, I'm, I'm sorry. Still, I thought you might want to get this guy yourself. We don't even know if it's him. Well, we've got the CCTV footage of him leaving Dr. Zellman's clinic, and a witness who saw him near the crime scene. That should be enough to put him behind bars for a long time. Don't you think? I don't know. I've got a funny feeling about this. Something's not right. Alright, what do we know so far about the killer? The man we're after is Joe Davis. He lives in his apartment on top of the stairs. We don't know that much about him. He's never had any problems with the law. There's no criminal record on his name and we couldn't find anyone who to have information about him. No friends, no job, no social life really. Dr. Zellman's secretary describes him as a quiet but bitterly sarcastic type of man. He's been seeing his shrink regularly for over a year now. His file was missing. I couldn't find what exactly is wrong with his head. But seeing what he's done to poor doctor poor old Dr. Zellman, I assume this guy is a serious threat to anyone around him. I guess we'll find more evidence once we get inside his flat. Tell me what you found in the crime scene. Billy, are you sure you want to know the details? It was... messy. It was really freaking messy. I need to know, Darren. How exactly was he killed? The killer put his head through the window. That was only the start. Dr. Zellman tried to fight back, but he was no match for him. He beat him up pretty bad. Then, he cut his face with the glass from the window. Bloody hell, Billy. You spent a good hour cutting his defenseless body into pieces. I know the relationship. The relationships between patients and their shrinks can be a bit uneasy sometimes, but this one... It was like if the killer put all the hatred he had in him into punishing this one innocent psychiatrist. Our forensic team found a small saw on the crime scene. Our killer used it to cut through Dr. Zellman's skull and remove the brain. Which is... missing? Yes. The killer must have taken it with him for some reason. Why would anyone need a human brain? Who knows? Some weird trophy? This guy must have completely lost the plot. Well, psychiatrists try to fix people's heads. Maybe by removing his brain, he's taken something his victim was most proud of? Something that was making his victim better than him? And a psychiatrist's brain would be an exceptionally good one. Yeah. 
Dr. Frank Zellman has a, had a fine brain. Perhaps that made our killer angry in the first place. Are you saying that he was jealous? Not exactly. He just felt that taking the brain would be the final humiliation to someone who frequently tried to fix his broken, sick mind. Someone who made him feel like a worse person. Billy, aren't psychiatrists supposed to make their patients feel better about themselves? Yes, they are. But the only way to achieve that is to find the very reason their patients feel bad for... feel bad for. That includes uncovering very personal facts about the person's life. Shameful secrets. Things they often don't even want to acknowledge themselves. And to share this with someone can be painful. So painful that sometimes they would deny the truth because they are unable to face it. And then they get angry. The best solution is to get rid of someone who constantly points out that there's a problem. It makes the problem disappear because their minds have already accepted the world as they see it. Madness becomes reality. They get used to it. They learn to live with it. To maintain this false image, they won't even hesitate to kill. As long as no one finds out, they're happy to live a lie. That's right. You got it, Darren. You don't really believe he's going to be in, do you? Well, yes and no. We've already established this guy's got mental problems. While most suspects would be crossing the channel right now to hide somewhere in France, I got a feeling that our killer is not that predictable. Nevertheless, when we get inside his flat, we should be able to gather enough evidence to track him down. Psycho or not, it'd be suicide to hide in his own flat after just having murdered his psychiatrist. We'll find out in a minute. The team is waiting for your order to open the door. I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Tell the officer waiting by the door to break it in. Then, we're coming in. We're going in. Break the door. So, can I... Can I go inside now? Oh, there we go. So this is where our Joe lives. But who really is this man? Is it our killer? Or is it just an average Joe kind of guy? It's time to find out. Billy. There's no sign of our killer here. The place seems empty. Look what he did to his crib. It's completely wasted. Don't assume it was him just yet. It's too early for that. Okay, fair enough. But the odds are good. My nose tells me that we'll find some clues here that'll lead us to him sooner than I hope. Sooner, sooner than I hoped. And my nose is never wrong. Have a look around, Billy. We need at least three pieces of evidence to make sure it's him. You don't mind helping me out, do you? No. For the sake of poor old Frank, this is my responsibility to find his killer after all. See what you can find, and come and talk to me when you've got something. What are you going to do? I'll watch and learn. You've always been my mentor, Billy, but this time... Like you said, this is your personal business. I don't want to get in the way. Alright, I'll continue in just a second, I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Man, I've been playing this game for about five hours. I'm really amazed my voice has actually stayed with me. I actually had to just go get water and put some eye drops in my eyes because my eyes were starting to sting for, from staring at this monitor for so long. Also, the game is completely silent at the moment. Just kind of disconcerting. Alright, wall. The wallpaper's been ripped off the wall here, but why? Was he looking for something? Was he angry? Did he do it in a sudden violent rage? Or perhaps he was just going to redecorate the room and never finished it. <laughs> Something tells me that's not likely. The light is blinking. There's a message a message stored on the answering machine. Hi Joe, it's Dr. Frank Zellman. You haven't showed up for your sessions for the last few weeks. 
I'm concerned. Is everything all right with you? I've tried calling you before. You never pick up the phone. I know these things. They're hard to get over, and you've struggled. A lot. I don't think you can cope with that on your own. Well, I'm always there for you if you need me. Don't forget that. Come and see me this Friday. I'll be waiting. So I wonder if this is actually reality. And Joe was just going on a murdering spree. Did he just invent? Did he just invent a reason to kill Dr. Zellman? Like, he's German, so he's a, you know, a stereotypical mad scientist who's also a neo-Nazi. Maybe he just invented it. Made up a bunch of stereotypes as a justification for killing him. Hmm. Oh my god, is that his blood? What's behind this curtain? Looks like writing in blood. Bloody hell, Billy. What the fuck is that? It's a cat. Oh god! A black cat. Oh my god. Is he just pinned to the wall with a knife or something? Pinned to the wall. Now, it's definitely an evidence that this man is extremely violent and aggressive. If he did this to a cat, he's probably capable of doing the same thing again. He might have murdered poor Frank after all. I think I should leave it there for now. There might be some fingerprints on it. Interesting. What do you reckon, Darren? Hmm. Looks to me like a creation of a madman's mind. The sort of dark poetry that bears deep meaning, but only to its author. Do you think... So you think this isn't going to be helpful at all? That'd be my guess, yeah. It also looks to me like a second part of the text. The beginning must be somewhere else. Hmm, what's it say? And he punished those who stood in his way. The road to hell leads through blood and... Blood and pain. What happened here? There's lots of blood on the carpet and on the table. Did he cut himself? Or somebody else? The screen has been smashed. Was there something on the TV that made him angry? Something he couldn't look at? Well... That's often the case for all of us. A fire axe. Perfect murder weapon. Billy, I thought you'd know better than... You'd, you'd know better not to touch anything? What? This could be a murder weapon with fingerprints on it. Relax, Darren. I know what I'm doing. Um... <laughs> I could still pick it up even if I wore gloves. Just... Jesus. I'm such a good detective. Red sofa. It's quite worn out. <clears throat> Alright, I guess we're not going to axe the sofa. But I wanted to axe the sofa a question... Never mind. Looks like he slept here not long ago. Among all the papers scattered on the floor, there's a photograph here. What the fuck? That's a really bad quality photo. It's hard to tell who's on it. Is it Joe? And who's the woman on the right? His wife? A friend? No, this is hardly evidence. This photo's creepy. I'm kind of scared to look at what the full photo would actually look like. Yeah. So the mirror's broken. That's seven years bad luck. Let's smash it. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, 
let's cut through the wall. No, apparently not. So what do we use the axe on then? Can't even talk to the police officer. He's mute. Axe the writing. The cat. The TV. The table. I'm going to talk to Darren. So Dr. Zellman asked him to come over on Friday. That's when he was murdered. Another piece of jigsaw puzzle is falling into place. Do I cut open the mattress? Okay, there's very little things I can actually use the axe on, so what do I use it on? Uh, take me away from this photo. No. No. Not the sofa, not the mattress. Not the TV. Not the writing. Not the cat. Not the curtain. Not the blood stain. Not the wall. A phone? Seems unlikely. No. What the hell am I missing? Should we let RSPCA know about this? He's talking about the cat on the wall. Let's just focus on the murder of focus on the murder of Frank Zellman for now. Yeah, sure. So, what do you make of it? I don't know why anyone would do this. It all seems quite bizarre. If you look closely, you can see that the cat's stomach has been opened with a sharp tool. What was he looking for in there? I have no idea, mate. But this Joe Davis seems to be completely off the wall. Unlike the poor cat. <laughs> nice one. We need some evidence, Billy. Mm-hmm. Come and talk to me each time you find something. By the look of the place, there should be plenty. Well, I wish there was, but apparently there's only two things. Where's the third? Mm -hmm. I, need, I need the first part. So where the hell is the first part? Can't see any clues here. He broke the mirror, fair enough, but that doesn't mean he's a killer. Hmm. How can I be stuck inside of this one little environment with only two items in my inventory? If I can use any of these things. Like the sofa. Nope. Mm, I'm gonna analyze it, of course. Nothing there. I can't even leave. Okay, let me look at the walkthrough. What the hell am I missing? Okay, listen to the message, pull down the cat, use UV... Use the UV light from your inventory. What UV light in my inventory? What the hell are you talking about? Are you kidding me? I needed to press the button to the left. Even though my inv inventory only has two items, even though it can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, like twenty items. The UV light was hidden. What? That makes no sense. Okay. So, whoops. It's probably on this wall, right? Mm -hmm. Deep down under the floor, I've hidden my fears and buried my love. Hmm. Doesn't really feel like a continuation of the text on the other wall. No, but it sure makes more sense than the other one. 
so he wrote on the wall, with blood. I'm assuming it's his own blood, as mental cases like to cut themselves. But it could well be someone else's blood. And this one we should leave for our lab to find out. This is just more evidence that this guy is our killer. That's it. We've got three good pieces of evidence. By the look of things, it's very likely that Joe Davis has murdered Dr. Zellman. Be quiet for a second, I'm trying to think. We have no time to lose, Billy. He might kill again. Soon. I think I got it. Is there a cellar in this building? Not that I know of. No, I think there isn't. I haven't seen any doors downstairs. I know these old buildings. All of them used to have cellars. Joe Davis never ran away. He's still here. See those floorboards over there? This might be the only way down. That's a bit far-fetched, Billy. How do you... I just know. That's where he is, trust me. Mr. Black, we've just checked on the neighbors. We found blood everywhere. A couple of bodies, too. What? It seems that... It seems that everyone in this building is dead. It's like a goddamn slaughterhouse up there. Fucking hell, Darren. We're too late. Call for backup right now. And Billy, we better find this guy. We better find him quickly. So he's down here, isn't he? We're about to find out. It's a psychiatric assessment written by Frank. Joe must have taken it from his office. The patient's mental condition is degrading. He seems to surround himself with delusions about his wife. This can be caused by the feeling of guilt. His wife had been known to suffer from anorexia, and his attempts to help her overcome the illness were a direct cause for their divorce. He does not acknowledge this very fact. On numerous occasions he mentioned that she is unwell, and still living with him. He was supposedly taking care of her, and she was getting worse. When talking about his wife, the patient became anxious. All attempts of putting him back on the right track and explaining that she had left him are causing violent episodes of aggression. Lately, these attacks of anger have been happening more frequently. Hospitalization might be the only option, and it's being seriously considered. It's time to turn it off, Joe. You have lost control, Joe. What you think is happening? Well, it isn't. You're hallucinating. Your mind created all of this madness because it suited it. I don't believe you, old man. How could... How could it be possible? You're telling me I'm crazy? Is that so? I'm telling you that you've hurt a lot of innocent people, Joe. Whatever your reasons were, they were wrong. You did a horrible thing. Does the name Frank Zellman mean something to you? No, I... I'm not sure. I'm not sure of anything anymore. This woman on the chair. Is that your wife? Look closely. Look at her, Joe. You fried the poor girl. You made her fat first, kept her down here for months, tied up, force-fed by you. She died a long time ago. And now you're fucking frying her, man. You've got to let go. It's over. You can't change what had happened. But you can still come out of this alive and atone for your sins. And maybe one day, you'll be able to forgive yourself. Shut up! Just shut the fuck up! I think you're forgetting that I'm the one holding the fucking gun. I can do what I want, you goddamn liar. 
I can blow your brains out for all I care. Yes, but what good will that do? You're not a bad man. You're not a murderer, Joe. What you've done, you've done out of grief and anger. You couldn't cope with your wife killing herself slowly, day by day. In your own way, you tried to save her. You still are. But face it, it's too late. This fight is over. Nothing can bring your wife back. No. No, 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 no. No! It's time to decide. Time to end it all. What are you gonna do, Joe? I think I better save. <laughs> oh my god. You know, for some reason, I feel like this is the most appropriate option. I... I really did it, didn't I? It's all my fault. I can remember now. It's all like a dream. Like somebody else's life. The annoying know-it-all doctor. He thought he'd worked me out, but really didn't have a fucking clue what was going on in my head. I kept it secret from him. I kept Ivy a secret. He thought she left me a long time ago, but she never did. I wouldn't let her. I loved her too much to let her starve to death. She just wanted to lose weight, that's all. But after a while it turned into obsession, and she just wouldn't eat for weeks. A little piece of her was dying every day. I did a decent thing. I fed her. I saved her. At least I thought I did. I can see it now. I deluded myself. All I ever did was hurting people I loved. Why? I never wanted to, then... Why? You were right. This is the end. I can never atone for what I've done. I'm nothing. A worthless, killing piece of shit. I must end it here and now. You can't die just yet, you fucking psycho. You will first pay for what you did to Frank. You will suffer before you die, you stupid ignorant bastard. I'm gonna smash your fucking face. I'm gonna make sure that when you die, you will be begging me for mercy. We have to run away, Ivy. They found us. You said they would. But it's okay. I know a place we can go. It's safe. They won't find us there. It's a small hotel. The kind you always liked. I think we should stay there for a while. I'll look after you, I promise. And this time? This time? You'll stay with me forever. Oh my god. Holy shit. Wow, after this, I... I feel kind of like I did after finishing the Cat Lady. I feel like I've been... I... I'm at a loss for words. I feel like... Um, 
I guess I kind of feel traumatized, but I mean that in a good way. But uh, yeah, I think that might be the best way to describe it. I feel kind of traumatized after playing this, just like I did with the cat lady. Except, uh, in this case, actually, it's more traumatic than the cat lady. The cat lady actually, for me at least, with the ending I got, was actually a, a pretty positive ending. Even though the experience overall was really dark and disturbing. Oh god, look at that picture. That image. Wow. Oh, what is this? What is this? So, I was right. It was a dream after all. Probably the strangest, creepiest, most real dream I've ever had. But still just a dream. And that man, Joe, does he exist? Did he have a dream as well? I guess I'll never know. Agnes? Are you in? Yeah, but... But go away. You're not supposed to see me. You don't believe all that, do you? Yes, no. Okay, just a little bit. But I wouldn't want anything to spoil our big day. I'm sure there'll be plenty that'll go wrong anyway. You know, my bad luck and all. All right, all right. I'm going then. I guess I'll see you, well, in the church. Don't be late. I'm never late. Right. Love you, darling. I know. Huh. So I guess my big day has finally come. Time to take a shower, put some makeup on, and have a little walk down the aisle. To meet the man I'm going to marry today. I feel this might actually be a good day for once. It must be true what they say. The sun always comes out when the storm is over. Huh. The game just shut down, by the way, which is why you can't see the menu or anything. Actually, let me bring it back up. Do you have something to look at? There we go. So what does that mean? So I remember, actually I'd forgotten about this for a little bit, but let's go back. So she told the floating Scandinavian ghost rock god that she was someone who like sold these dresses and she was just wearing it to uh, to to show off the, the product basically. And then she told Joe that she had lost her luggage and the receptionist had given it to her. But then we see here that she actually was getting married. So, what the hell? I don't have any explanation for that. She obviously lied to both of them, and this is what's actually happening. She's getting married, but why lie? What's the significance of that? Now, a lot of these... Well, maybe not a lot, but some of these characters and some of these locations and places and stuff are referenced in the Cat Lady, but I'm trying to remember Agnes. Was she ever mentioned in the Cat Lady? I don't remember her being mentioned. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I've played two of this guy's games so far. Which, actually, I think might be all he's made so far. I'll have to look up and see if he's done anything else so far. But, yeah. I've played two of his games. I would say his name, but I'm probably just going to mispronounce it like I mispronounce every name that is not incredibly easy to pronounce. Basically, if a name isn't John or something like that, or something super bland like that, I can't pronounce it. So I'm going to refrain so I don't make a complete ass of myself. But yeah, I've played two of his games. The Cat Lady, and then now I've gone back in time to this game, Downfall. And 
I've I like I really like both of them. I really I love them, I would say. I'm incredibly impressed. It's funny, it um it came out before the Cat Lady and I can certainly see big similarities between the two in the overall feel of it. So the Cat Lady was a game that I thought was very very raw and kind of vulnerable feeling like it felt it felt like it was a view into the mind of the creator like every every little fear and worry kind of just put on display like wearing your heart on your sleeve kind of thing I guess except in this case not on your sleeve but in a game like it felt it felt like a very personal game and this feels the same way And when it comes to the art style and the technical aspects of the game, it feels like... Well, the art style feels pretty much identical to the Cat Lady. Maybe not quite as good looking, but still pretty, pretty identical. And from a more technical perspective, it also feels similar to the Cat Lady, but kind of like a... less advanced version of it, technically speaking. As in, it's got more kind of... It's a little bit... The interface isn't as good, it's kind of harder to use. So it's, as an older game, technically speaking, it's definitely not as mature, but in terms of the themes and the, um, how engaged I was with the story and how well the story was told, I feel like that's just as good as the Cat Lady. And the Cat Lady did it extremely well. This game did too. So yeah, from a technical perspective, not as good. It had some issues, the weird inventory clicking problem. And... It's just a bit messier, and it's really hard to click on stuff in the inventory to get it to work right. It's kind of finicky. And, uh... Yeah, there's some other stuff that I can't remember off the top of my head. But none of it's too much of a barrier to actually enjoying the game. It wasn't that big of a deal. And thematically, just like the Cat Lady, this entire game is like one gigantic punch to my gut. Like I said, I feel like I've just been traumatized, which is actually something that I kind of like from my art, whether it's a game or a movie or something. I like really intense things that kind of leave me feeling exhausted afterwards, and this game certainly does that. I feel tired. I just played this for f about five and a half hours. Almost. I feel exhausted after all of that mental... <laughs> the mental anguish I just endured. But I like it. It was a good kind of pain. It was told well. It was told very well. Yeah, I just... So what do I like about it? Okay. Oh, you know, I just realized there's a big significant difference from the Cat Lady. It actually doesn't have any voice acting. I just realized that the Cat Lady had full voice acting. Huh. Well, anyway. So it's... I, I really like extremely dark and disturbing games, of which this is certainly one. And I like how it was a sort of... descent into madness. I like it when that happens. Where it's just everything is going wrong. You know, it starts out, it seems simple. Your wife is having a panic attack or something like that, she's not... mentally all that well. You need to help her. So at, at first it starts off with a simple kind of quest. A simple goal. You need to help your wife. She's not doing too well. And then things get a bit worse. Then suddenly she's gone. And you're looking for her. And then suddenly everything's wrong. And then suddenly you're murdering people. And then it just gets worse and worse and worse. It just gets crazier and crazier. I never knew what to expect. You know, it's... You're starting to do these horrible things. And I'm thinking, am I just in a... You know, am I just defending myself? It seems like I am. I need to kill these people. I need to kill all these different versions of Sophie to get my wife back. Alright. Simple. I get it. You know, I'm doing good things. And then the rug is just pulled out from under you. Oh, you no, know, you're not doing good things. You are a murderer. You're... You've completely lost your mind. It just keeps getting more and more horrifying. And it was... You know, it was horrifying to begin with. It was horrifying before. Even... Even if you were just defending yourself and you're killing these Sophies to get your wife back, to try to protect her, 
Even that is horrifying enough because of what you're doing, you know, poisoning them, cutting them in half, blowing them up. It's incredibly disturbing what you have to do. But then when I found out that I hadn't actually been killing Sophies, I'd been killing everybody in my apartment building, I'd been killing neighbors, I'd been killing complete innocents. It was just made even more horrifying. Now I have to admit, you being like a, a character thinking that they're doing good things or just defending themselves and then it turns out that they're mentally ill and they were actually, you know, killing friends, family, innocents, whatever. It's kind of a cliche. It's a fairly common thing. It's not exactly unique, but in this case, normally I don't like cliched things very much, but in this case, I actually think it works. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just even the most kind of cliched of concepts, if told in a good way, can be good. And in this case, it was. I'm not really sure, but I'm okay with it. Even if it has definitely been done before. Yeah, I just... Oh, I really like it. It's hard to explain exactly why. I don't know if I've captured that at all, but just... Being right there in it. With him. It's like I was... It's like I was going crazy with him, I guess. If that makes any sense. You're not just watching it happen, you're doing it. Hard to explain. But, but yeah, the, the darkness of it, how disturbing it was, the, just the way the story was told, the format of it, just really worked well for me. And to talk about some other parts of the game, well, the music is pretty damn good. I like it. The art style is... Well, it's kind of like... The art style is very similar to the Cat Lady, I think. In that it looks very... It looks very rough and sketched. Like it was just kind of thrown together. But not necessarily in a bad way. I wouldn't say it looks cheap. The art style. Or the art. It, somehow it's a sort of roughness that feels like it fits the world. Kind of. I will say, like, some parts of the art don't look very good, especially the characters. Just like with the Cat Lady, the characters do not look very good at all. And, yeah, some of the parts of the environment don't look great, but for the most part, I think it looked really good and it fit the feeling of the world that it's set in. This horribly disturbing and twisted world. I mean, the art was twisted, which fits Joe's mind. Which is twisted. It worked. And it was really... Not sure if disconcerting is the right word. It was uh, disorienting, maybe would be a better word to go from a room that looked to go from a room that's kind of colorful to then you go to another room and it's just like completely looks like it was sketched in maybe pencil and it's just completely black and white. There's like these dramatic shifts in in the colors and the art style between these different rooms, which made everything just seem even stranger. But I really liked it. You know, it's not just one one type of art style, but it's a bunch of different things. Which I think lended even more more of a feeling of uncomfortableness to the environments of being in these places, because they just they didn't feel right. You know? There's something wrong with the environments. Not just literally because there's bodies on, on the wall and whatnot, but because there's just the feel of them between. Switching from one kind of room to another just felt so strange. And alien. So I really like that. Let's see, is there anything else to mention? I mean, the game certainly has flaws, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the, the interface is a bit of a mess. You know, there's a lot of spelling mistakes. It's kind of hard to find the hot spots for a lot of items. Which isn't, it certainly isn't helped by the abstract nature, the kind of abstract and strange nature of the art. It makes it kind of hard to see certain items and what you can click on and what you can't. So I ended up having to sweep my mouse around the screen. So I think uh, some sort of a hotspot indicator would have been nice. So it's definitely got a fair share of issues, but... I'm totally... I, I think everything else makes up for it enough. Totally makes up for it enough for me to not even really consider it that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, they didn't stop me from enjoying the story. Alright, anything else to mention? I always remember things after I finish. 
but hopefully I haven't missed anything big. I think that might be it. So yeah, just like the cat lady, I freaking love this game. I really, really like it. And just like the cat lady, I feel mentally exhausted after playing it. So, I'm gonna go relax after playing this game. If I can. <laughs> oh boy, that was one hell of a game. I feel exhausted. Yeah. And, well, I keep mentioning the cat lady, but I'll mention it again. I really love the cat lady, and that cemented the creator. Our Mike something? I, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, so I won't try. It uh, cemented the creator in my mind as being really damn talented. But now that I've played this game, it's cemented it even further. I'm absolutely going to be keeping a very sharp eye on anything he makes in the future. And also I'm going to be checking backwards to see if he's also made anything else so far. I really like his games. Yep. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of Downfall, and thank you for watching. <laughs>